Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to do a Fanatec Podium Hub install on a brand new Hyper here. Um, I know I've, we've been getting a lot of questions. People want to install this hub themselves directly to a GSI wheel. And it's a little bit more involved because a Fanatec Podium Hub is not the easiest thing to install on the on a wheel um, because it's threaded and it's in one direction so you can't get it from can't get it from here so you know you notice like on our hubs um, you know you have one side that's threaded and then the other side that's not threaded now if you wanted to you could easily just attach this with the non-threaded holes to the threaded part of the GSI and then attach the podium hub to this so you could do this setup without opening the wheel now a lot of people don't want that they want the you know they want the direct connection which because this thing's already massive as it is um, you know you want to be able to install the Fanatec podium hub now I'm gonna I'm not gonna comment on comments for this video but hello is it Matthias Matthias we're shipping your wheel today I'll show you in a second. Um, so, um, yeah, the issue is here is the Fanatec Podium Hub has threads, and the back of the GSI wheel has threads. Now, um, I, you know, assumed everyone knew this, but they don't know this, it seems like, because we get, we get a lot of people making this mistake, which is they take a regular screw let's just say i'm gonna just grab this screw here um and you notice how on this screw see that there's threads going all the way from the top to the bottom which is a normal screw now the problem with this is that if you use a screw that has is fully threaded the thread pitch of the back of the wheel and the thread pitch of the fanatec podium hub they don't they won't line up you know because think of it like this you have one set of threads curling this way and then for the screw to go in and catch the next set of threads that are on the podium hub they'd have to match perfectly in alignment and they rarely if ever do so what you ends up doing is people they'll they'll take this thread it through then they'll thread it through here and feel a little resistance and just like keep keep going and the, all, they're in the, all they do is ended up stripping here, and then when they get it all mounted up, they're like, why is my, you know, my wheel making noise, and, you know, it's making a creaking noise, and, the, and it's moving back and forth like this. It's because you don't have a, a solid connection because you've stripped this, you know, you've stripped, you've stripped this, you probably stripped the wheel too, and you're just never going to get it back. So I'm going to show you guys how to properly mount this using a set of um, captive screws. Now the way captive screws work is you can see here there's a small threaded portion and then the non-threaded portion. So you to get it to work correctly you thread this completely through the first element until it's loose and that will be able to then receive the Fanatec Podium Hub that you have ready for it. So <clears throat> for this exercise you're gonna need a Torx T6, a Torx T10, a Torx T25, and then a 4 mil hex. These are the, the four tools you need um, to open this wheel and then put the, put the hub on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start taking this apart and showing you guys at home um, how to do that. So these, these tiny little ear screws... And it should only take a little bit of pressure. This is with the T6. And an another good habit is like, you know, when you have these screws, get yourself like a little, I don't know, bowl or something to keep the screws in. I have a large table here, so I'm just going to put the screws over here. Um, so we're going to take these out. It should, shouldn't take that much pressure. So that's the end. That's it. For two for those two little tiny little screws on the ear, that's all you need the T6 for. 
Now we're going to move to the T10, and that's going to take care of these eight M3, or no, actually six, just here, here, and here, 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 and here. You don't need to undo the screen screws. You just need to do the six M3s on each side, so we'll do that now. So you back those out. Now I usually I usually have like a an automatic guy like this that you know takes the screws out but um for today I'm using hand tools because I want to kind of mimic what you guys would be doing at home so you can see how long it takes. And it's a fairly simple process. I mean the main thing too is when you're working on something like this, uh, having a clean working surface and being organized about where you put the screws is really uh, important. Uh, because although it's easy, things can get lost. People make mistakes. Um, you know, and also if there's ever a time where you feel like some of these screws are hard, too hard to back out, the only thing you need to do is apply heat to them to loosen them. Now you can apply heat with like a hot air blow dryer, you know, like something that you might use to like blow out your hair or something, or your wife might have one. Um, or, you know, here we have a soldering iron with a hot, hot air gun and you can use that to loosen the screws. So now we've got rid of these two little guys here with the T6 and we've gotten rid of the six M3s um, that need to come out. And so this, the last bit is these larger M5s and that's taken out with the uh, Torx 25. And again, that's pretty simple. You're just taking these out. Hey, Slav. Yes, you need a wife first. <laughs> um, right, so yeah, you're going to take care of these four. And I'm making this video because I probably should have done it a long time ago. And, you know, people get really scared, you know, opening their wheel and understandably. But I'm going to show you how simple it is. And I'm doing it live! And the thing is, is... You know, if you're slow and deliberate, it'll be no problem. So, okay, so now you can see I can um, semi-lift the face off, right? And this is where a lot of people get confused because they're like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, that's because you need to get rid of the two, the three funky switches here. And then you're going to do that with a, M one, uh, a hex... 1.5 mil. So you just go and get the set screw off of each funky, which is basically a half turn. Um, you'll see that there. And then, you know, you'll come in here and it's like, boom, all you need is like a little bit of rotation. And you'll come over here. Be careful too, like you don't ever want to like strip those set screws because you will you won't be able to get it off the wheel. So now it should totally come off, right? And you can see the faceplate um, coming off. And our wheel, uh, the Hyper is different because the handles are not attached to the faceplate. The handles are actually attached to the aluminum body. And this is because of eliminating flex from this area here, you know, because sometimes if... If it was on the carbon, this would be wobbling back and forth, and nobody wants that. So, um, once this is off, then you what you want to do is you just kind of want to hold it up like this and bring it out towards you, and be careful because you don't want to um, you don't want to bend these buttons in any way. So you want to pull it out straight back, mm -hmm. and then when you see you'll see here there's a there's three connections. Um, there's the con the connection to the left button board, the connection to the right button board, or actually left and right, 
and then the power. So what I do is I just like to take the power out first and you just tug right at the base of the connector. You just tug and it'll come out. Now these two, it's a little different because these two have a little latch. And I wonder if I can zoom in the camera here to show you that. You see here there's like a little, there's a little latch. And all you need to do is just press it in with your finger and we like fingernail and you'll just come out like that and then this side should be a little easy too be careful yep see and then it just and it comes out now I'll show you the I'll show you this here you'll see there's like um goes into yeah a little latch here and then you'll see on the connector here has a little Let's see if it'll focus focus yeah there's a little a little latch here it's having a hard time focusing but you can see it it's like a little a little pull latch so it's just those three connections it's fairly simple let me pull out a little bit fairly simple um now mind you when you open up the wheel um it should be fairly similar most of the wheels now are they're all built the same way this one you know I have a ve little velcro tab for the screen there um, but yeah that one's all all sorted out let's see here now this is where it gets fun um, you're gonna <coughs> You're gonna want what you want. Bleh. What you want to go do, what you want to do, is these little screws. Focus. These little screws have to go all the way into the body of the wheel, and then out the other side. So what I like to do is I like to hand tighten them, just by by hand, and you'll see here. Let's see if I can do this. You're just doing it like this. And and if you want, you can use your uh, four mil hex driver. I'll just kind of go like this. And then you'll see what's happening. You see that? See how it's loose? That's the key. Because now it's free to rotate and free to catch that um, podium hub. So we're going to do that on every single one here. See? Easy peasy. And once it falls through, it'll be super. It'll just, it'll just like literally fall. Like boop. And you want that. You want it to, you want it to like fall through. Now you might have to s kind of make sure you move some of these wires around. They're loose wires long enough to make the connections, but you don't want to have wires close to your to these things because you don't want to get them cinched. Right? Yeah, right here. And see, this is why I like to do it by hand just to get them get them going now mind you when you're doing this it's really imperative that you don't slam into the buttons this way or slam into the buttons that way because they're a little the the actuator under underneath them could snap you know because they're only meant to go up and down they're not meant to go side to side so um, now that we have all those in you can see they just fall see how they fall They'll be like this, and then they they fall back. So yeah, see, they're loose. You can see they're loose. So what I like to do now is by hand the F on this hub. Um, it always needs to be facing up, right? So. And I'm sorry, I'm not answering your questions right now because I need to just make this video for a future reference for everybody. I'll answer the questions at the end. Um, 
so I just like to introduce it and you see how it's like it's loose now I can I can kind of um, I can see you know where the hole is and I just start threading them just so that just so that it grabs the first couple threads of the hub um, sometimes you know it's like you have to fish around Hold on. but yeah so there I got a, I got the first one second one third one and then once you get three in there the rest of them kind of just latch on pretty quick now mind you when you're putting this thing on you don't want to tighten down you don't want to tighten down one side you want to do a little bit at a time so like two or three turns so I'm gonna do this top one I'm gonna go like I'm gonna go in like two or three and then I'm gonna go to the bottom one and I'm gonna do equal amounts two or three and then I'm gonna do upper right two or three upper left two or three lower right couple couple turns a few turns and then I just keep rotating like that and it's just little by little and you're getting the uh, entry um, even you know and you just keep going in a kind of a same rotational pattern because you want it to go in even and th these kind of things it's like you don't want to rush you know rushing never leads to to goodness you know so and I'm just kind of holding it um, in with my hand on the back here I'll just keep doing this in here and you'll feel some resistance because our captive screws have um, what's called Loctite on them already applied make sure also make sure you're not crimping any of these wires when you're doing this I always kind of just push them out of the way now once you kind of get most of these you know uh, get them there it's you could just tighten them all up. Okay, now. Yeah. See, now all of them are snug. Just go around. It's just that initial one you don't want to, like, you don't want to um, go in tight with just one side, you know? All right, so there is our podium hub and that's installed pretty simple now you can and this is assuming you've already put these two pieces together that's totally fine um, and then so what you want to do finally is I like to kind of um, kind of lay it stand up at the table and lay the face plate uh, kind of just on my on against my belly and I'll plug the power in first you can't mess this up because the connectors are, are like married to each other and then I bring the body a little closer these just pop in they snap you kind of don't want to have them tangled so it's just three connections they go in boom and then what I like to do from here is I hold I hold this like this, I'll flip this over like that, and then I'll just, with my hand, I'll just slide it back in. And then what I like to do is I like to come in with the M5s and I'll just place them like this. Come in with my trusty T25. And I never, I always go in a cross, you know, start here, come down here. 
Also, before you do this, I forgot to mention, if you feel any resistance on the body or on the faceplate or when you're putting in your screw, back it out and check to see if some of the wires are maybe pinched along the carbon fiber because if it's it needs to just it'll it'll lay down flat if everything is smooth you know but if you feel any resistance at all always be cautious and then you know pull back out so yep so i, I don't tighten these overly tight at the beginning because i want to make sure everything is kosher so I'll just go like this, and I'll just get them all kind of in there before I, you know, go in there and tighten them properly. And when you tighten these things, you don't need to, like, go, uh, you know, freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger on this stuff. I know that everybody's always concerned about noise and this and that, but um, sometimes over-tightening things could lead... Uh, to creaks and, and noises and things like that because everything's so um, overstressed, you know. Of course you want it to be tight, but you don't want to go overboard. This is what I'm saying. Let's see here. Okay. All right, and then the last ones I put in these tiny little guys. They're really small. Be careful not to do that because you don't want to scratch your wheel. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it for Fanatec Podium Hub install. Um, obviously, you know, I think if you, you know, if you understand the concept behind a captive screw, you'll understand why they're, you know, they're needed. Um, lastly, you got to put your funky caps back on or your multi-switch caps. Um, and you don't, again, you do not want to over tighten these. You just need to tighten them enough so that they don't fall off. Um, cause if you over tighten these and you round out the little set screw, you'll never be able to get these off. So, that's it. Um, pretty simple process, but and as you can see, it's not uh, not difficult to do if you're careful. And you know, you can you can you can put this on you know just about any wheel using those captive screws. Um, we actually, you know, if you notice on our website, we actually now will install these for you when you you know at the time of purchase and it'll come shipped to you like this if you want but if you have your own now you guys know how to do it especially guys overseas uh, that were a little nervous before but as you can see pretty simple i'll be um i'll be making more videos like this uh, just quick uh little instructional videos and um kind of you know answer questions and, and stuff like that but uh yeah, there it is. Simple, effective. Now, mind you, um, um, when you get this put on uh, your Fanatec DDU, this just basically makes it so you can use high torque mode and it'll connect to your wheel. But the, the wheel still will connect via uh, USB here. And, <clears throat> you know, I think probably... I want to say about 5% of people uh, with Fanatec direct drive bases will experience some EMI coming from that base. And all you need to do from, you know, when you have that problem is ground your base, um, you know, ground your rig to your PC so that that electrical magnetic interference that's coming from your direct drive doesn't interfere with the wheel. Now, if you run into things like where the shifters don't work or the wheels like acting sporadically, um, it's most likely that. And you can test against that by like undoing the wheel, having it plugged in and holding it in your hands while not touching the metal of your DDU. And if it goes back to acting normal, you know then that you have EMI and you need to ground your rig. And, you know, pretty simple to do that too. And we have that stuff on our Discord. But like I said, it's only about 5% of 
of sort of you know of Fanatec users, and you know we don't no we don't have that problem on the other bases, but um, you know I think the issue is that you know Fanatec has a proprietary system with the pins and all that and all that stuff kind of uh, works together. Uh, you know, easily because it's grounded through the pins. But um, anyways, uh, that's it. And, you know, if you guys have any questions, join our Discord. I'll, um, you know, I'll post this video to our Discord, but our Discord is just Discord slash GSI. And um, thanks for joining. And I'll see you guys later. And maybe I'll stream some more wheel builds this week. But anyways, short stream. See you later. All right, bye.